Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? For most people, listening to compressed music is no problem. MP3s, AAC, streaming audio, it all sounds just fine. But for others, even full quality CDs just aren't good enough. So this time, we're gonna talk about high res audio. So in order to understand the whole thing about high-res audio, we need to take a look quickly at where music has come from. Obviously, it started in the analog realm. Things like wax cylinder recordings moved into vinyl records and analog tapes. And then starting in the 80s, with the birth of the CD, we really entered the digital music era. And the CD was a really big thing when it came out. Of course, it was very expensive at first, but there were some major, major benefits to switching from an analog medium like a vinyl record or a compact cassette to a CD. And that's why eventually most people did, right? The CD became incredibly popular over time. It wasn't at first because of its expense, but you know, by say the late 80s, it was really picking up steam. Part of it was the cost. Eventually the cost came down to be really kind of comparable with other mediums, maybe a little more expensive, but not horrendously so. But the audio quality was a decent factor in it in that now you had a very consistent listening experience every time, right? The CD sounded the same every time you played it. Whereas vinyl records and cassettes and those sorts of things would tend to wear over time, so their sound would change. So CDs were very consistent. And then the big thing really is that CDs were very convenient, right? You didn't have to rewind a CD at the end of listening to it. You didn't have to get over and flip a CD over to get to the other half of the record. The entire thing just played start to finish, and that was it. And then you also had the convenience of fairly compact size, fairly decent durability if you took care of it, didn't get it scratched, and then also the ability to instantaneously skip from one track to another. So there were some major draws to moving to digital. But being an audiophile, you know, people who are, are really into getting the, the best audio musical experience that they can, that's not a new thing. Audiophiles go back decades as well. And at first, audiophiles were kind of tentative, you know, as to whether the CD thing would work out. And I remember reading reviews and articles, you know, not back when they came out. I, the CD came out around the time I was born. But I remember reading articles that talk about, you know, when the CD first debuted and when the initial kind of set of reviews were coming out. And a lot of audiophiles said, no, it sounds too sterile. It sounds too bad, whatever. So there's always been this desire for really, really high quality, high fidelity audio that goes back more than just the few years that we've heard this term high res audio. It just goes back decades and it doesn't really seem to matter which format, you know, is actually being looked at or, or trying to take over as that high quality standard. There's always been this desire for the best audio quality you can get. So with that in mind, there have been several attempts really at getting high res or high resolution, high quality audio to be mainstream. And the ones that I want to talk about are ones that actually came out after the CD. They are all digital in nature, but they were all really meant to replace the CD as the better way to listen to music. Well, in order to understand why these formats came to be and why they tried to dethrone CD as, you know, the de facto physical standard for, you know, buying and, and listening to music for consumers, you need to understand how digital audio works. There are really kind of two things to think about when it comes to uncompressed digital audio. So this this does apply to some extent to compressed audio like MP3s and AAC files and all of that, but all the high res stuff really kind of focuses on uncompressed or unloss, I should say losslessly compressed if it is compressed, you know, basically non lossy 
audio, the, the purest form you can get. So CDs, they debuted and their, their big claim to fame was their digital quality. So compact discs operate at 16-bit and 44.1 kilohertz. What those two numbers mean is basically kind of the resolution of the audio. So when audio gets converted to digital signal, it basically gets chopped up into bits, which kind of makes sense because, you know, digital audio is just a series of ones and zeros, of course. That 16-bit part basically talks about how much data is in every slice of audio. So for a regular CD, it's 16 bits per slice. The more bits you have, the more detail that you can capture per slice. Those slices, uh, you know, is, is what they call samples, and the sample rate is that 44.1 kilohertz. So 44,100 times per second, a slice or sample of audio is taken. So with CDs, each one of those is 16 bits. A comparison to this, if you're familiar with video, is kind of thinking about, you know, with high def, we've got the, the size of the image, whether it's 720p or 1080p or 4K, and then you've got the frame rate, right? 24, 30, 60 on up. The higher the resolution, the image, and the faster the frame rate, in general, the more true to life the image is going to look. It may not look very good from a cinematography kind of perspective, but in terms of being compared to the way we normally perceive the world with our own eyes, something like a 4K 60 frame per second video is going to look more true to life than say 720p at 30 frames per second. So that's kind of the comparison when it comes to understanding digital when it comes to audio. The more samples you can do per second and the more data you can capture per second, the better ultimately the representation of audio that you can end up with. And that's really what high-res audio is trying to go after. It's trying to do higher resolution than CD. So one of the first formats in digital that I want to touch on is something called Super Audio CD or SACD. It was developed jointly by Sony and Philips around the late 90s. And while they were physically similar to DVD discs, they packed about the same amount of data onto a disc, they weren't directly compatible. The big claim to fame with Super Audio CD was not just the higher bit rate and sample rate. Typically those were, you know, bit rate was going to be somewhere around like the 24 bit type of type of samples and sample rate was going to be um, upwards of uh, like 96 kilohertz. So, you know, they tried to kind of go for double the data. Um, not just higher resolution, but also additional ways to listen to music. So Super Audio CD, um, one of their big pushes also was multi-channel audio, not just stereo, but trying to get like surround sound going for music. So albums on Super Audio CD could be mastered in like 5.1 or 7.1 or something like that, where you get that real immersive surround type of experience in addition to the better quality. The problem with Super Audio CD, and this is kind of a common thing with the next format we'll talk about as well, is you needed a dedicated player for it. They, You couldn't just take a Super Audio CD and pop it in a regular CD player and listen to it. Even if you wanted the regular CD quality, it just wouldn't work. So Super Audio CDs were their own new separate format, and you had to have a Super Audio CD player to play them. Of course, when they first came out, they were fairly expensive and selection was limited. And as time went on, while selection did get better, it never really reached parity with CD. And by 2007 or so, generally people declared Super Audio CD was just a failed format because not that many people jumped into it. Consumers really never got on board. The next format, which came out a little bit after that, not too far after, was DVD audio. And this was pushed by the group, the consortium that actually founded DVD video. 
they had kind of the same goal. Let's try and go for a better audio experience. Let's try and push the DVD format, try to get more adoption there. And so they kind of did the same thing as Super Audio CD, but they actually had it work on regular DVD media. Now, you also needed a dedicated or specific player to play DVD audio. The catch was, though, a lot of DVD audio players also played DVD videos. So at least the machine was multifunctional, as opposed to Super Audio CD players, which would only play Super Audio CDs and regular CDs. The, you know, Super Audio CD were limited to just audio, just music. At least with DVD audio, they tried to get there to be a better value if you do have to go out and buy a specific player. Now, some DVD audio tile titles apparently were mastered in such a way where you could play them on a regular DVD video player, but you wouldn't get the better audio quality, so that kind of negated that bit of experience. But ultimately, DVD audio fell to kind of the same fate as Super Audio CD because it was a separate thing, and it was a change in format, and you did, if you already had a DVD video player, you had to go out and buy a different player to play these titles. You know, it never really took off. A new, uh, somewhat new, somewhat recent edition now, again, along the lines of physical media, is Blu-ray audio. Um, it goes by a couple of different trade names or group names. One is Pure Audio Blu-ray. Another one is High Fidelity Pure Audio. They sound similar. They're from different groups, different companies, but they basically represent the same thing, and that is high-res audio on Blu-ray discs. Now, thankfully, this time around, it's at least a bit more consumer-friendly in that these these discs can play on any Blu-ray player. You don't need a special Blu-ray player just to do the high-res audio or anything like that. Every Blu-ray player can play these Blu-ray audio titles, and that's just because they're taking advantage of the high-quality audio support built into the Blu-ray standard. These high-res audio discs are basically just regular Blu-rays without the video portion right? Uh, regular Blu-ray movies, TV shows, what you get, they support high-res audio as it is. So they're basically just taking, you know, music albums and putting them on Blu-ray and high-res and hey, there you go. So there's definitely a convenience factor there and that you don't have to rebuy your equipment necessarily. But again, it's a different format and it's not inherently portable. And it's going to be more expensive. The discs are more expensive than regular CDs or, you know, audio file downloads, that sort of thing. So Blu-ray audio really also hasn't taken off so much. You know, none of these formats have taken the world by storm. And all three of them advertise as being, well, we're going to be the replacement for the audio CD. We'll talk about why that isn't the case in a moment. There's one more thing that I want to talk about, one more format I want to talk about with with high-res audio, and that are that is the um, kind of the current way that I think most audio files get it, and that is through file downloads. So there are services like hdtracks.com where you can go and buy you know full music albums, um, and there's actually a pretty decent selection out there. I should note. Um, but it's all in high res, so it's meant to be better than CD quality. It's all lossless audio. You can download them to your computer and play them on whatever device you have that's compatible. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, the downside, of course, is in order to actually take advantage of those files, you need to have equipment capable of playing them back. And the other thing is they're more expensive. You know, uh, a regular album that would go for, say, 12 to 13 bucks in you know, uh, a lossy audio file format, like from the Amazon, you know, music store or iTunes or something like that, or even compared to a regular CD, these high res downloads go for a bit more, anywhere between I'd say 18 and 24 bucks. So there is an additional cost to, to getting into this other than just the hardware you have to have. Why, why have none of these things really, really taken off? Well, I think the, the file download model has the best chance of sticking around for a while instead of being a physical format like a disk. But 
Why I think they've really never taken off has been a few things. First one, of course, is going to be cost. They cost more. And when new stuff costs more, people are going to be like, well, do I really need to switch? You know, when what I've been doing so far has worked really, really well. So it's not just the cost of the music you know, that cost that that is a factor, but it's also that hardware cost. And I think that's ultimately why Super Audio CD and DVD audio and even probably Blu-ray audio have and ultimately will fail is just because people don't necessarily want to have to invest that much money into something they're already experiencing now. They're already experiencing, you know, decent quality music. And that you know, that kind of leads into some of the other factors in that you've already got this really pretty solid format that people have adopted and they're used to and they already can play on a just tons of devices. You know, you've got to get past the inconvenience factor. CDs and now compressed digital audio are very, very convenient. You know, every, you know, most cars in the last 20 plus years, probably even longer, have had a CD player in them. Computers for a long, long time had CD players in them, and a lot of people owned portable CD players and, you know, stereo systems and boom boxes and all of this stuff that play CDs. It's a ubiquitous format, and and only now is it finally dying out. But, I mean, the same thing with, with compressed music files. Cars from the last few years can play MP3s if you put them on, like, an SD card or a flash drive or something like that. Smartphones. It's a core feature of a smartphone. And even before the smartphone, we had portable digital music players, the iPod, that sort of thing. So we've had these kind of standards that are very well entrenched in our lives. It's hard to disrupt them. So there's that inconvenience fact as, as you know, factor as well. Another thing is consumer confusion, especially when you have multiple formats competing with each other. Especially since, you know, uh, like Super Audio CD and DVD Audio, in their case, they were competing against each other. They existed at the same time. People are going to get confused. Wait a minute, Super Audio CD, what's the difference between that and regular audio, audio CDs? And DVD Audio, well, okay, I, I know what a DVD is. I watch movies on that. What does the audio thing have to do with it? And why would I switch to that from CDs? The average consumer is going to get confused and not necessarily understand why they should move to a newer format like that. The big thing, though, ultimately is the quality. It, are these high res sources, are, do they sound better? Yes, absolutely. They sound better. And I'll say a controversial statement in just a moment, though. The thing is, for most people, though, they may not notice. And the bigger thing is most people may not care. You know, the average person who just wants to listen to music they may not care if it sounds better than a CD. And the fact that compressed music, MP3s, AACs, have taken off and people have adopted them is proof positive that if it's good enough, then consumers are generally going to be okay with it. You know, they, the consumers generally don't need the absolute best in, in terms of that technical sense because most people aren't going to be that technically savvy. I mean, if the music sounds good to them, if it sounds clear and crisp and, and you know, it doesn't skip and it's like you don't have to deal with all the hassles, the physical hassles of things like vinyl records and tapes, if those are, are not really an issue anymore, then people aren't going to be all that excited to switch. Now, the controversial statement that I have to make is I've been dabbling in high-res audio, and yes, I could throw significantly more amounts of money at it from a hardware perspective, a better digital audio converter, even better headphones, better headphone amp, all that sort of stuff. But with what I've been dabbling with, with the pretty decent equipment that I have, I even haven't really noticed that big of a difference. Is there a difference there? Yes, I can, I, I can tell a little bit of a difference, but it's not mind blowing. It really isn't. And so there's the barrier to entry to even make it worth it is so high that you're really only going to attract, I feel, the most diehard of audiophiles and music fans to really even try out that format. 
most people have equipment now that can at least play these downloadable high-res files. You know, most computers, their sound cards can play them. Can they play them well? Maybe, maybe not, but they can play them. A lot of smartphones nowadays can play these higher-res files, things like 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. But, you know, with the added cost and the way people listen to music now, it's often on the go or in the car. They're not listening in an environment very conducive to high fidelity audio where you can really just sit there and close your eyes and listen and pay attention to it. You know, music's become more background noise than anything else. And I've talked about this before. So is high-res audio really ever going to take over for these compressed audio formats that we have now? And sad to say, I don't think so. Even with all the storage space in the world and, and the hardware becoming ubiquitous, uh, you know, I'm not sure that it's really necessarily ever going to be anything other than just a niche format. Which I think is a bit disappointing because part of me wants that to be a you know a big thing. I love music. I love listening to music, and I I want the best music experience that I can get. But I also do so within reason. I'm not an audiophile, at least not a typical audiophile. I don't consider myself a diehard in that sense. I want best bang for buck. So do I listen on twenty dollar headphones? No. Do I listen on two thousand dollar headphones? No. I'm gonna go for something in the middle that represents the best value for the money. And with gear priced like that, high-res audio, I find, sad to say, just not all that much worth it. So I'm curious as to your thoughts. Have you tried out high-res audio? I'm sure there's gonna be some audio files that are watching this episode and they're absolutely slaughtering me down in the comments right now about how full of crap I am or whatever. These are just my thoughts. If you've got different ones, all I say is, hey, the comments are down there. Just please be civil. So I'm just curious. Do you have you listened to it? Are you a diehard? Are you not? Are you do you just regularly listen to music? And have you never even heard of this kind of stuff? Let's just keep that conversation going. So if you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at this does not comp. And as always, thanks for watching.